And Jesus says worship is for the poor. When we're not poor, because he said, blessed are the who? Poor in spirit, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Worship is the commerce of the kingdom. I bring it up because, like I said, I, I hate to see saints sitting. I'm just saying. When worship is going, because worship is not about your preference. It's not about your sound. It's not about your proclivity and what you've been exposed to. I like country, rock and roll, hill song, our house. Uh, as untempered, as imperfect as it is. The attempt that we did on this morning, the group, was phenomenal. My spirit is bubbling over. And truly the house is to be filled with the fragrance of God. There's a lot in there. I ain't got time this morning because they ain't my message. I just want to provoke you. I want to become a go-ahead. Provoke you to love and good works. You just, you want God to do something this morning. Some of us want a word from God. We want to hear something fresh. We got to participate so the whole house can be full. You may be strong in the Lord and the power of the might, but there may be some poor among us. That's what it said. There may be somebody that's next to you that is lacking something in their faith. But are you willing to make sure you appropriate and place uh, guidelines and protocol to what worship is all about? It's never about us. It's about Him. What are you willing to sacrifice for Him? I'm willing to sacrifice my own personal comfort zone. I think that's the greatest duty I can do for somebody in this building. Even though, you know what I'm saying? Come out of my comfort zone. Okay, that's all I want to get back to. My, I really want to get to the regularly scheduled programs since we started this series. And, uh, and you know what? The word is out because I put it on Facebook, so it busts me out. Although I was in the back and I felt another leading, I said, now let me stay true to the path that uh, God was giving me last night. Uh, what I want to talk about the title is The Way of Life is Above. The Way of Life is Above. The Way of Who? Life is above, above. I'm going to take this set of teachings and this installment. I'm going to talk about protology. It's a theological term. It's the study of origin and first things. Amen. When I met Apostle Tim, he said something to me after a couple of conversations and I, you know, talking about the scriptures, talking about what the Lord was leading me. He said, man of God, I really sense but you're going to have a keen sense of understanding of the ancient of days. Yeah. And he gave me a scripture in Jeremiah 6 and 16, if you don't mind, go there with me. He gave me a scripture. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I feel the rabbi. I feel the teacher. I feel the paraclete. I feel like my tongue is as a pen of a ready writer. And I hope that our hearts is ready to receive. In Jesus' name. I had to give a prayer in. It says in verse 16, Thus saith the Lord. Don't you like that in scriptures? Uh, Thus saith the Lord. Just got some significant behind it. Some punch. Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. Not just show it to me. Not just explain it. Not just have a discourse. Not just have a high level of uh, interaction. Uh, philosophically. You know, theologically. But show me the good way. So that I can walk therein. It says. And, and the ramification and the result. And the effect of finding the good way. Of asking of the, uh, uh, the old paths. Hey, you get what I'm saying? Now, I'm not talking about old paths as it relates to religion. Protology is talking about the ancient paths that God had in itself in the foundation of the world. Amen? This is the reason why apostles are very, very important. Because when you look over there in 1 Corinthians 12 and 28, it says, first, apostles. That word first is proton. 
Proton is a word that's connected and comes from protology, which is the study of, of origins and first things. The reason why a thing exists and the chain of events that enhance that concept. We call it in, uh, the law of first mention. So when you can find something first and you can see it from Genesis to Revelation, that is a part of protology, proton. Amen? And it says when you understand the ways and you can see and ask for the old past and you have a tendency and a desire to walk in it, what happens? Huh? You, uh, yeah. you shall find rest for your souls. Didn't Jesus came so that we can have rest for our souls? When he was talking about all them that labor and are heavy laden, he wasn't talking to unsaved folks. Who was he talking to? The religious leaders. The Sanhedrin and the boys. The Sadducees, or the Sadducees. And the Pharisees. Amen. Uh, so it says, but they said, we will not walk therein. I believe God is raising up a people that will not dis be disobedient to the faith. I believe it's going to be a people, the first part of this, not the B clause, the A clause, is that there's some old paths, there are some ways that God has set aside protology. So that's why I said, I want to start this teaching on the way of life is above. I want to make a distinction. I want to bring a dichotomy between what God is expecting from the church. And that very precious thing that you carry in you that we were taught to call it holy. The spirit of Christ. Come on now. That's what we carry. We got the, we got the deposit. We got the earnest of God's spirit on the inside of us. And it's imperative for us to open up the scriptures and allow the Holy Spirit to bring a, a, a crescendo of information, line upon line, amen, precept upon precept, so that we can begin to uh, reflect the life that God has called us to. He didn't call us to church, He called us to life. He didn't call you to the anointed, He called you to life. He didn't call you to ordinations and fivefold ministry gifts and the nine gifts of the Spirit. He called you to life. You can have all those things and never have life. I trust you. I, I know people that can go through all emotions and don't have the life. I'm looking, I told you I'm not looking for, some people looking for what's right, some people looking for what's wrong. I'm not looking for what's right or wrong. I'm looking for life. Life, life is important. That's my barometer. That is your acid test. That's how you can measure the quality of life. Is you looking for life. Because Jesus came that we may have that and more abundantly. He came that we may have life. Amen? Okay, now we get in our message. Go to Proverbs 21, 16. God desire for us to have life. Life that God has ordained for us is from above. It's not in the earth. It's not from our original birth. Amen? Proverbs 21 and 16 says that the man, the man that water, water, the man that wandereth out of the way of what understanding should remain where? In the congregation of the dead. The man that once knew the way, the man that, this is my paraphrase, it was a man that had direction. It was a man that had hope. It was a man that sat in the church. Amen. It's a man that has got gone away and went astray of understanding. When we forsake understanding, we abide where? In the congregation of who? The dead. There are dead congregations because the people don't have understanding. Understanding is important. Wisdom is the principal thing, but understanding is important. Don't devalue it. You need to know, I told you a long time ago, there's the, there's a threefold core, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Am I right? What did I say what wisdom was? What to do with what you know. Wisdom, yeah, that's what, what to do with what? What I know. But knowledge is first before you get wisdom, right? What is knowledge? What I know. Wisdom.
wisdom is what to do with what I know. What is understanding? Huh? I said what you know about what you know. There you go. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's understanding. That's simple. What do, what do you know about what you know? See, if you leave it off, it's just, if you don't understand when I'm up here speaking or when the Holy Spirit is ministering to you, it's not enough just to have bright ideas. It's not enough just to have the light bulb come on. It's not enough the neon sign in your life to, to be blinking and God is speaking and sharing things with you. Most of us get so intrigued and enamored with just being exposed to a thought. Yeah, yeah. To get a revelation. Well, God spoke to me. Girl, you in the first tier. You ain't, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You got to go look again. <laughs> like you told the guy, he went to look and said, go ahead and go look seven times until he finally saw something. So that's the first uh, installment. That's the first opportunity you have. That's the key to everything that's behind door number one. And you, you got to be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to bring us understanding. And through this teaching, I want to bring you understanding. I want to bring this house understanding. Because you got to understand the, work, the whole church world the whole globe, the body of Christ is inundated and flooded with information. All information is not good information. Some of it is misinformation. We got to allow God by His Spirit to raise up individuals who be willing to interpret and bring understanding to our lives so that we don't have to abide in congregations of dead things. When Jesus told us, let the dead bury the dead. We can't keep putting our hands to the plow and looking back. We got a, There's a level of consistency. There's a level of commitment. There's a level of passion. A level of desire. But what God has set forth in the Word. Although there's a lot of teaching, we don't have an understanding. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to attempt to do, is embark on a journey to upgrade your understanding as it relates to living from the above life. Or living from above. Amen. So, let me start my teaching. Teaching can have its origin from the study of the Word, and yet not, ha and yet, and yet not be true revelation of Christ. I'm going to slow down. 